It is also fascinating that the European Union issued a poster which was posted all over Europe where they had the Tower of Babel under construction. Can you see that? This was posted all over Europe and the stars were upside down representing the goat of Mendes. This is Satanism. This is the new Tower of Babel and uh, the high French politicians said we are building a new Babel which they emphasized with this poster and this time see. The new parliament of the European community is built like the Tower of Babel. In fact it has a plaque on the inside or a poster which says precisely this. And it has this scaffolding to give the appearance that it is under construction. This is rather arrogant. This is the new European identity card and if you look at it at the back and you turn it upside down, what do you see? You see the goat of Mendes. The horns are slightly modified to give another symbolism of the seat of the earth but uh, the inner facial features of the goat are very clearly discernible and what these mean over here I would rather not say. If we look at the high politicians of Europe, those that played the role in all of this, they are Masonic. That is a Masonic handshake between Schroeder signifying the new Mason is taking over where the old Mason is leaving. So just as we saw that uh, Kerry is a Skull and Bones member in uh, America now and the present president is a Skull and Bones member, it doesn't member, matter which one is going to win. So here too Mason replaces Mason. Fingering the system, they're all showing that they're all part of the same system. When the Soviet Union fell, the new emblem that it adopted was this one, the double-headed eagle. Could you guess why? Well, the double-headed eagle is the symbol of Freemasonry and it obviously shows who is in control. The queens, the kings of the world, as we have seen, all of them are high masons and subject to the Roman pontiff. And Islam, we lecture to show the intrigue of the Islamic religion and the Catholic religion that behind the scenes controlled by the secret societies they have one aim and one aim alone subject to Rome. So what is all this war about with Islam? Who are these people who are pulling the strings in the world and why are people being rubbed up between them? From the rock stars of the world, the bonos of the world, to the political leaders of the world, everyone seems to be bowing down to the papal Caesar. From the east to the west, the Islamic world is currently being set up as the synthesis in the religious world, pitted against the Judeo-Christian culture as the antithesis, and then out of this must come a synthesis where all of them unite. This is a website, there is the, the actual website underneath and this one I believe fairly accurately says who's who in the zoo. Adam Weishaupt, Astor, Pike, Carnegie, DuPont, Harriman, Bertrand Russell, Ted Kennedy, these are the Illuminatis uh, of yesteryear and today. George W. Bush of course is a Skull and Bones member, that's a sub-organization of chapter 322 of a German organization, the Illuminati therefore, Bundy, Habsburg, Freeman, Teng Hui, Hillary Clinton, Alan Greenspan, Rockefeller, Rothschild, Wahlberg, these are the bankers in the system, the negotiators, uh, Lord Carrington, Jimmy Carter, Henry Kissinger, Lord David Owen, Richard Holbrook, these are 33 free mason, degree Freemasons or Knights of Malta or Bilderbergers, Committee of 300, they all belong to the same club. If we look at uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt, Engels, all of these, Trotsky, Stalin, Marx, Hoover, all of their affiliations, Grand Orient Lodge for example, Grand Orient Lodge, 
uh, Lennon was Grand Orient Lodge, Truman 33 degree, Willy Brandt 33 degree, Winston Churchill. We've seen many of these before. Helmut Kohl, Committee of 300, Francois Mitterrand, 33 degree Freemason, he does he is not alive anymore, Yitzhak Rabin, Yasser Arafat, 33 degree Freemason. These are fascinating details. Shimon Perez, Ronald Reagan, George Bush, Gerald Ford. I showed you Gerald Ford's signature where he signed for himself that he was a 33 degree Freemason. There it is. I photographed it in the lodge. And the Carters and these great political people in the world, the Schroeders, the Netanyahu's, the Gorbachev's, there is Saddam Hussein listed as a 33 degree Freemason. Now, that is somewhat strange, wouldn't you say? King Hussein, Al Gore, Tony Blair, all of these issues. Look at Saddam Hussein over there. Here's a picture of Saddam Hussein. And this is a picture that was beamed on national television during the war. During the war of what he looked like. Now, they also said at that stage, that they weren't sure whether this was pre-taped. That means it could have been pre-taped before the war even took place, because if they are insiders, they would know who's who and what is going to happen. Now, there is a very interesting rumor about this man. Have a look at his face, and have a look at the fact that he has no beard. The CIA, as well as the British Secret Service, said at the time it could be a double. It could be a double, but nevertheless, that is what was depicted. He has always looked like this. He's never had a beard. This is what he's looked like. Operation Iraqi Freedom, such trouble. Opposition leader claims Hussein died of cancer in 99. This was posted March 26, 2003. Muslim al Assadi, a doctor living in exile in Iran, said he believes the real Saddam died in 1999 from cancer. The real Saddam died because he had cancer of the lymph nodes, and since his death in 1999, they're just showing his doubles, he told the Tandian newspaper. That's a, f a fascinating story. If Saddam Hussein was really dead, and the others were pre-recorded stories, then who was ruling in his place? His sons, and his wife, and his other children were also there. It fascinated me that the moment the war broke out, and England and the United States went in there, that uh, the wife and the children of Saddam Hussein, except the two ruling sons, were taken away and received exile where? But in Great Britain. So the country that attacks takes the family of Saddam and gives them uh, political exile in Great Britain. Very strange. Now if he was dead and they were putting doubles in front, and they were ruling really through the sons, and they showed these shot up bodies of two individuals who nobody knows who they really are. Who knows whether that is really so or whether that is not so? Despite the reference to Um Kaza, British intelligence thought the broadcast may have been pre recorded. This is a fact. We are well aware that he spent many hours recently tape recording various messages. We have to do a little more analysis of what he was actually saying to see whether or not that in fact was Saddam Hussein. British Defense Minister Geoff, Jeff Hoon told reporters, White House spokesman Ari Fleischer said, I think there are some doubts about whether that tape is canned or whether it's fresh and based on recent events. So both of the secret services question these issues. Then they find finally Saddam Hussein's hideout, a filthy place, they say, and they arrest the man and show him on national television. After that, one does not hear too much. And he has a magnificent beard. A magnificent beard. Now, if the previous one was shot during the war, then this must be the best hair fertilizer that mankind has ever <laughs> found. Maybe he could become a multi-zillionaire patenting this fertilizer to make this grow as it is. They used at least three doubles who knows who this man is.